Chopin's Opus 10 is a set of 12 etudes. Most of them are very fast and very difficult, but this number 3 in E major is a much welcomed relief with a tempo marking Lento Manantropo. It has the nickname Tristesse, which means sadness in French. This is not Chopin's idea, somehow it got it through history. Uh, and it's not really sad music, it's quite pleasant music. And I think the idea is not so much sad as in tragic, but more like sad as in boring. Because for me, the perfect picture for this music is it's raining outside and you're sitting by the window and it's a little bit boring because you can't do so much to go out, but you can't really complain and you maybe feel a bit nostalgic thinking back of your life. That's a picture that this music fits right into. And Chopin was very happy with the composition. Apparently he's supposed to have said that he had never in his life written another such beautiful melody. So that's quite a good testament. So an etude means a study piece. And at first, maybe this piece doesn't come across as the type of study for some technical feature that it addresses that you should practice on. But actually, it is a test for the ability of the pianist to be able to play a cantabile melody and accompaniment voices in the same hand, which is not easy at all. You need to be able to have a kind of voicing within the hand. You have the same technical challenge in Schubert's impromptu in G-flat major, for example, and a lot of other pieces and sections of pieces as well. And it also has a middle section with a flurry of chromatic tritones and jumping six in diminished chords. So if not anywhere else, at least in that section, you feel the etude element. Let's go through the music. So let's start with a harmony here. It's actually really simple. It's going between E major and B major, the tonic and the dominant. creating this rocking back and forth and it feels almost like a lullaby in this way and then of course we have this beautiful melody that we're supposed to play with this part of the hand these fingers really loud compared to the accompaniment voices in the other part of the hand so only the right hand The first phrase is actually five bars long and it's uneven in that way, a little bit unusual, like the traditional uh, straight phrases, maybe four bars, but this makes it slightly more personal in a way. And in general, the style and the texture here feels almost more like a classical piece. For example, compare it to Beethoven's Pathetic Sonata, the second movement. quite similar in the same register and everything and the Chopin biographer Frederick Niex said about this piece that it combines the classical chasteness of contour with the fragrance of romanticism and I think that's exactly right. Now for the next episode we get some new harmonies we get the D natural is a E7 that goes to A major But it soon turned into F sharp major and 7. That's the dominant to B major. And B7 is the dominant back to E major. So it's a nice little round trip here. And it's only a three bar phrase. Also this stretto marking. It's the romantic fragrance. You never would have that in a classical piece. Uh, it's like the feeling, the subjective feeling takes over from underneath and need to come out in the music. And Ritenuto going back down in tempo and we're back with the main melody in E major. So it's, this is the same phrase again. Now 
with the next phrase is kind of the same idea as before. So it's the E7, but now it's slightly higher up with the B. So it's like a nine, E9. And now going in a new direction. And now stretto, this is uh, more crescendo the second time, comforts and everything. And these pumping chords in the left hand and, and right hand. triumphant on this E E chord with B in the bass. But then resolving ever so gently. With some minor chords. And before we reach the E in the end, it's the A. A to E, the subdominant to the tonic is a plagal cadence. That's the proper uh, tristesse kind of cadence, the plagal cadence. And this is like a close of the first section of the piece, pianissimo and in E major. And now the episodes start. Uh, in the form we get like several episodes, just uh, coming after each other with some new ideas all the time. And we get Poco Più Animato, slightly more faster and moving. And here we get Parallel 6. It's much harder to play this than it uh, sounds and looks, because you still need the melody on top. And here I would say that the meter is offset. Because you feel this as you start like on the one here. One, two, one, two, one, one. But it's a little bit uh, ambiguous uh, because Chopin puts it in the middle of the bar. And also this phrase structure, we have two identical phrases. But the second one has a different meaning than the first, just because of the order. And it's really impressive how the first time it sounds like it's opening up. It goes somewhere and then the second time, exactly the same. It's exactly the same, but it feels like it's closing, just because of the order and the way it's constructed with these harmonies, I think, in the end. It's, it's the dominant that we end up, but this is a tonic. So you, it can go both ways. And now uh, this, we have a sequence, so the same idea, but one note higher. And the second time it's more tension in these minor chords. get one extra beat and we're back in the right meter when we get to this is the one. Uh, but the way you feel it is kind of you get one uh, bar with uh, three beats here. One, two, three, one, two. And now like the farther you go in this piece, it gets more and more interesting and amazing. So now we get more complexity in the middle voices here. More notes, the left hand is divided with two voices uh, and the right hand gets more thirds, uh, more notes to play. And A major and starting to modulate now to A minor. Such a beautiful, subtle shift in modulation. Also, it's important to do the piano here, I think. You can, it's easy to get carried away with that. But, and then, I think you can do the forte. In my score, I have it in parentheses, but, because now there's a sudden outburst of a new texture with a half diminished chord that comes here. this pattern uh, and I think it's nice to 
to bring that out. But we go back and uh, go to B major and now it's a sequence again. Exactly the same thing, modulating from major to minor. And half diminished chord, the same pattern. And now we're ready for the etude element of the chromatic tritones. So this is actually um, simpler than it sounds like. It sounds like total chaos, but it's actually just a chromatic scale down in tritones. But the right hand jumps up an octave every other note, but they're actually connected. And it jumps up. And then instead of that, it jumps up. So. So it goes up and down at the same time uh, in a cool way. But anyway, we reach fortissimo on B major and we get this like concerto like arpeggios and uh, orchestral chords. And again. So we're just uh, gravitating around B major with some kind of. Two half diminished. If B major is the dominant, this is the F sharp uh, minus five seven. And now we have the hardest uh, section of the piece: the six in diminished chord and jumping. So it's kind of the same as the tritones. It's just diminished chords. So this is the same diminished chord. Then we change the diminished chord to this one. And then we go down chromatically. So if I would play the diminished chord, um, it's kind of like that. But it's slightly more uh, irregular than, than before because it goes up and down a bit different. So it can you get the impression that it's a bit chaotic, but there are some uh, order to it still. It's very hard. I think uh, if you play this, there is some work to be done with hand rotation. Like move the wrist and you might get a better accuracy. It's very big, um, very hard if you have small hands as well. And also we have a rhythmic issue here as well. Because when I hear this, I can only hear it. Like if someone else plays it, it's so natural to hear it as kind of maybe how it felt when I played it now that it's starting like on the beat here. One, two, one, two. Because the articulation, when you have these short slurs, uh, whenever you have these kind of slurs, the second note needs to be um, softer than the first. Like the first is an accent and, but if we were to play as uh, the rhythm suggests, and bring out the rhythm instead of the meter, it would be but that goes against the articulation so it's like a dilemma you have to choose either the articulation or the rhythm uh, and they are different so I choose articulation and I actually feel it as on the beats because it goes on for a time then in the end you kind of transition back to how it's actually notated uh, with a lovely chromatic transition from the diminished chord. And again we land on a B major, we haven't, even through all the ca this chaos we haven't got anywhere else. Uh, it's just back to B major. And then we get this lovely transition back to the main theme. Uh, so it's piano directly, super legato, and it's like Chopin is vamping this material over and over again to try to find the way back. And we get some nice spice here with the A minor and the E minor. Now 
here starts the real vamping. And increasing the speed now. And Smotsando is dying away, Relentando is slowing down to the final return. It's because it's prepared for all these eight bars, so it's such a good feeling when it comes. So the harmony here, uh, we're actually um, E7 to A, we're like going around E and A and B here, and A minor to B7, but then E7. These chords are, it's not really clear where the tonic is because of the seventh, uh, but then now the E is the tonic, but it's E minor, so it's not clear. Such a bittersweet chord, this uh, minor and the sixth of the minor chord, if it's E minor or you might say it's C sharp minus five seven. And now we get the recapitulation of the main melody. It's pretty much the same, but we skip over one of the new ideas. So after the phrase, now we go directly to the one that is slightly higher the second time. to E major. And now we get a few bars as a coda, just ending the piece. Now this is A minor or the F sharp 7 minus 5. And a long time just E major. This is really the lullaby uh, rocking to sleep and uh, dying out. Just E major. And then we have this interesting marking here. It says attacca il presto con fuoco and that means the next etude in the set. The C sharp mi minor uh, there is a thought by Chopin that they're supposed to be together, that's why the marking is there, but of course you can play this piece by its own as well, definitely. Thanks for watching Sonata Secrets. The Patreon shoutout in this episode goes to G. Katkov and K. Narayanan.